Shackleton is in excellent form today. So I just had to give you your Shackleton fix. So I'm continuing my video on the European uh, heat waves. Okay, so last video was talking about the European heat waves and I'll finish um, my thoughts on that, this video. So here's the problem. Okay, you get a very, very large amplitude wave ridge of the jet stream over Europe. This ridge extends southward across the Mediterranean into Africa, into the Sahara Desert. The, the hot, dry air in the Sahara Desert crosses the Mediterranean where it picks up water vapor. The warmer the Mediterranean, the more water vapor that will be picked up. And I've been looking at the sea surface temperatures in the Mediterranean, how they've been increasing significantly, you know, over the last few weeks. So more and more water vapor is picked up, and then that goes up into Europe, um, bringing extremely high temperatures. Because the jet stream waviness is much greater because of the loss of Arctic sea ice and the Arctic temperature amplification, and it's getting stuck in place. These meanders in the jet stream are getting stuck in place. This heat wave could become very, very persistent. And as we lose more and more Arctic sea ice and snow cover, as we head to a blue ocean event, we could get almost permanently fixed jet stream ridges for months at a time in certain locations of the planet, baking them, basically, drying them out, massive heat waves, which is, which is what we're seeing already. And then other areas in the troughs of these jet streams can get tremendous amounts of rainfall. Both things are very bad for people, for animals, for plants, for growing food, for getting fresh water. Okay, so we're hitting extremely serious consequences as a result of climate change. So I'm tired of politicians denying or saying, yeah, we have a problem, but then not doing anything or saying we're de going to declare a climate change emergency for Canada and then flying off to the uh, Raptors parade, you know, not even being in Parliament when the motion was, was set for declaring a climate emergency. So it's just talk right? Talk and, and not the action yet that is required, nowhere near. So let me continue with what's going on in Europe. Okay, so I was talking about this video, uh, you know, the end of this video. I was talking about this article um, on, you know, Europe has had five 500 year summers in 15 years, and now we're having the six, and it could be a one in thousand year event. Um, okay, record breaking heat wave cooks Europe. So, you know, it talks about how roads are melting, and, tr you know, I've heard trains are, the engines are overheating, a lot of cars aren't functioning too well, they had to lower the speed limit on autobahns. Right, this shows. Uh, Earth Null School, which I'll get to, um, showing the the uh, ridges and troughs. Um, this is a very interesting video. So what we see here is the red areas are motion from t t northward. Okay, so these are ridges of the jet stream, and the blue areas are troughs of the jet stream. So you have, often we're getting a pattern of seven. So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven, okay, that sort of wave number or mode seems to be um, typical um, in summers when these things... Now, look over Europe here, okay? This is not moving. So this is, this is June, um, about June 3rd to the, tw to the uh, 23rd. Okay, so it's cycling through day to day, and what you can see is the fixed ridge here over Europe. You can also see how far south it goes. 
Okay, so the bottom of the ridge comes down over the Mediterranean, extending into Africa. So that means that this hot, dry air in Africa will then move over the, to the Mediterranean, depending on the sea surface temperature in the Mediterranean, will then move up over the land into Europe, creating this, this heat wave. This is exactly what we're seeing right now, okay? So climate reanalyzer is familiar to many of you. Okay, so here we see the temperature anomaly at two meters. Okay, in these sort of regions, uh, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 10 to 20 degrees, these colors. Okay, if we click on this, you can see these temperature anomalies occur in other locations. Right, you can see they occur in other locations, but you know what happens when they occur in an area with extremely high population density, you know, half a million people, they are, the, the, ocean, the Mediterranean is warm, you got warm dry air here moving up, and uh, you know, it's, it sets up the stage for, for catastrophe. Okay, so here we go with Earth Null School. So Google Earth Null School, and I'll, show, I'll play around with it a bit and show you um, how, how good it is. Most of you or many of you are familiar with it. So this is now. Here's where we are now. Now I put this at a location where it gets very, very hot. So let's back up three hours. It's night, right? We're going into the day. This is the temperature of this location. Keep going. Now you can see it's at 35.1, 42.2. 41.3. So here we are, 42.2 degrees Celsius at this location here. Okay, what is the jet stream doing? Okay, uh, wind. Okay, so the jet stream, you can see the movement here, here. So you get this very strong ridge. We'll back it up here. Okay, so look at this strong ridge here. Okay, now let's go back days at a time and see how that moves. So here it becomes curved off to the left a bit, but it's covering Europe. And go back here. Okay, so now you can see it's straight. Okay, so no heat wave in Europe. And now I'll advance through an hour, uh, three hours at a time. And you can see how it's changing, how it's starting to to uh, ridge up here. Okay, so these things are happening all around the, the planet, you know, these wavy jet streams. And when they happen to coincide over an area of high population, if it's a ridge, it's hot and dry, you know, massive heat waves. And if it's in a trough that's stuck there, then, then flooding. So that 2010 heat wave where a ridge was stuck over Moscow, killing lots of people and destroying 40% of their grain crop, the trough adjacent to that ridge was over Pakistan, causing rains for a month, flooding out 75% of the country. So if we continue going back three hours, you can see how the jet stream configuration is changing. Okay, let's go back to now. Um, so this is where we're sitting here. And if we go back to temperatures uh, at the surface, and uh, let's go back to uh, where we had the record, that 42.2 here, and look at the temperatures over here, okay? So what's happening is that temperature from the Sahara Desert in Africa is basically being matched up here into Europe. So if we, you know, if, for example, with no Arctic sea ice, if we had permanent summer ridges over here, then we're basically turning Europe into becoming part of the Sahara Desert. Okay, if that was, if that was what worked out. And I'm not saying that's necessarily the case. Um, don't know, have to look at it, study it in, in a lot more detail. Um, relative humidity. Okay, 
Super dry here, 6%. Right? Over here, 76% because you're over the Mediterranean. Okay? And then when you come here, you know, it's 26%. 46%, 10%, okay? So it's, pretty, it's, it's much more moist over the Mediterranean, you know. There's lots of evaporation, a lot of water vapor going into the atmosphere. It's very dry here, so the dry air crosses the Mediterranean, and then it comes here, and these numbers are much, much higher than, than, than the dryness. This, you know, single-digit relative humidity here, you know, 70%, 60%, 75%, right? 80%, right, in here. And then that water vapor gets pushed up into Europe. So the temperatures are matched, but the humidity is much, much higher. So this is actually much deadlier conditions. Um, when you, if you have the same temperature here as you have here, you're going to have much higher humidity here. And this is asking for catastrophe for those 500 million people living in Europe. Let's look at the ocean temperatures now. So this is the ocean sea surface temperature anomalies in the Mediterranean. First of all, we'll look at the, so the anomalies here, so 3.9, 4 degrees, 3.2, 5 degrees, okay, 5.6, 6 degrees. So the water in the Mediterranean is quite warm. Now this is now, and if we go back, this is the anomaly. Okay, you can see how the anomaly, I'm going back at a day at a time. So look at the difference here. This is the end of May in the Mediterranean. This is June 2nd, June 7th, June 12th, June 17th, June 22nd, and June 20, uh, 27th. And what you can see is the tremendous warming. No surprise, we have massive heat here. You know, it's warming the surface temperature. But that warming of the surface temperature is leading to much higher relative humidity values. So if we go back to um, air and go back to relative humidity, you know, you can see those areas again you know the, how, how the relative humidity is so high in the mediterranean it's much lower over the desert although it's higher than i thought it was single digits when we looked before and up here it's uh you know can be high so combine you know 54 percent humidity so go back a couple videos again and have a look at the wet bulb i did a series on wet bulb how it pertained to uh, india conditions Okay, uh, this is another product which I showed in the last video with sea surface temperatures. So if we look at the, uh, if we look at uh, June 27th, you can see up here, you know, it's showing the temperatures. 22 is the yellow to 24, 24 to 26 is orange, and you can see what the temperatures are here. And we can go back. Um, the weekly product here is not quite so warm here. The daily product, so it's warming, you know, day to day very, very rapidly. No surprise. Okay, so this is Google Earth looking at this particular region. Okay, so the problem is, once again, what we're seeing is a jet stream ridge coming right up here. Okay, so the Sahara air the dry Sahara air is crossing the warm Mediterranean, which is warming each day noticeably, as I showed you on the Earth Null School. And then that humidity is being carried up far over, over Europe. And this is a persistent ridge of the jet stream causing this massive extended heat wave in a region where 500 million people live and air conditioning is rare. 5% infiltration in France, only 2% in Germany. You know, I suspect it's similar in these other countries. You know, Spain being closer to the desert here is, you know, the desert is, it is possible that the desert crosses the Mediterranean and this becomes desert, or at least the, the very, very high temperatures, very, very high humidities. So this does not bode well. Thanks for listening.